Hello YouTube, I'm Paula Deming and welcome to an upload of a live stream from Twitch of the game Final Girl sponsored by Van Ryder Games. A big thank you to them. Today I am playing Where's the the box? What's that? I'm playing uh, this is a terrible way to show you the Creech Manor and the Poltergeist and I'm very excited. I was telling Twitch chat before we got going that uh, I streamed this before I ever started putting these on YouTube. This is the first game, the first scenario, the first, I'll use the right word, feature film. I streamed on Twitch of this game and it destroyed me. So I'm hoping today things will go a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed this upload. If you ever want to watch these live, you can join me over at twitch.tv slash Paula Deming. You can see uh, the chat. It's right there. It'll be on screen on our gameplay screen as well, and I might talk with them occasionally. They're going to help keep me honest about the rules. Look, I'm not claiming to be a rules expert on Final Girl, but I'm going to do my best. We'll try and catch any errors as they happen, okay? Uh, but so you might hear me talking to Twitch chat a little bit. That's what that is about, and I've muted and turned off my Twitch alert so that hopefully they aren't too distracting for you watching on YouTube. So let's get to it, right? Also, you might see in chat, we are doing a giveaway on the live stream today. If you enter the word haunt in the live chat, not YouTube, this is just currently just for Twitch. We might be able to do a YouTube giveaway at another time, but just for Twitch, this is our uh, giveaway. If you type in the word haunt in chat, later we'll run a giveaway for a, a core set and a feature film of your choice uh, of Final Girl. So if you're watching on YouTube and you're like, why does everyone keep putting the word haunt in chat? That's why. Okay. Oh, Holly Toilet is here. Holy Toilet, excuse me. Says, I usually watch YouTube just because my work PC blocks Twitch, but not YouTube. Makes sense. Makes sense. So here we are in Creech Manor with the Poltergeist. Now, I have to be honest, I am... Um, from season two, everything is so like interesting with so many twists and I have so many new rules to learn. Well, here uh, at Creech Manor, Poltergeist from season one, there's just some really fun little like location moving things, but there was not a crazy amount of extra rules to learn and it made me so happy to be like, oh, yeah, I got this. I got this. So, um, <laughs> Sasquin Grandma says, don't trust her. Haunt is our cult word. You have to say it. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping I can beat it this time. I'm hoping I can beat this time. So basically the main things are you cannot kill the poltergeist because she's a ghost y'all so she has no health our uh horror level will start at three so i've got that here um i'm actually today gonna use this cool alternate mini that i have for her um there instead of our red meeple so we're gonna put that on the board today but we'll use the other, obviously this red meeple will be the horror tracker, and then I will use the pink meeple for me in the low, in the the on the board. So I'll chuck that away. So she has no health, so she can't be like attacked or damaged. So what do we do? We need to find, let me actually come back over to this camera, Carol, this little girl stuck in the house, because it's a poltergeist, y'all, and we need to find her and we need to exit the house with her on one of these exit spaces. And if we can do that, then we can win. But we don't know where she is. We have to find her in our, uh, by searching our location item decks. So it's going to be a very different way of playing, especially because people have watched me play before. I don't do a lot of searching. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of searching in this game. Uh, Let's see, what do I need? And that's basically it, we have, we have windows that are just, they might come up on some cards that come up, so we need to know those are window locations. We have some one-way traveling, so where they have the arrows, you can only go the direction that that arrow is pointing, which makes sense. You can come out a window here or a window here, oh, or you can, there's like a hole in the floor from this, whatever this TV room is down into the washroom so you can drop down into that but you can't climb back up that hole right uh here you can climb up because there's a ladder so you can go up or down that we've got three outside locations that's 
basically, I think the stuff, right? That's it. Um, yeah, exit the house or the poltergeist will get you, says Stephen Malofsky. They know what's up. Those are basically the special things. So we just need to survive the poltergeist and get out of there. I think now, yes. Yeah, so we need to do our setup. Then we need to pull an event, and then we're ready to go. Oh, today, I haven't told you who I'm playing. I'm playing Selena. Here, actually, this is what I want to do. Look how I'm going to be able to show off the cards. I'm so excited. Again, I'm sorry the color correction doesn't quite match, but it's a new camera, and we're working on it. I'll be playing Selena. She has six health, and yes, that is one reason why I chose her. She also gets her ultimate ability once you've saved four victims. You can see these spots on the card. If you don't know the game, this will all make sense as I'm playing. Um... Sorry, kibble happened and I can hear cat in the background expelling that kibble. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Packer fan, yes they were. <laughs> yes they were. <laughs> um, so whenever I save a victim, I can put them on one of these spots on the card and I get this bonus and when I have all four of these spots filled, we flip this over and we get her ultimate ability. So I think this is what chat was saying. One of the final girls ultimate abilities lets you roll extra dice when you search. That's why I chose Selena. When resolving a search action card, roll two additional dice. So that's going to help us with our searching. Yeah, Legends DM says my girlfriend likes scary movies. Maybe I should try and get her into this game. This would be a good one to try, I think, uh, if she likes scary movies. Okay, so let's do our setup and then we'll pull our event. So. Okay, we've got Creep Show. So I am just outside the uh, the door there. <gasps> Camelisk is all set up to play along. I've played Poltergeist a few times and never won. Yeah, we'll see. I don't win this game very often, do I? Y'all, I have pretty bad dice luck. Uh, yeah. Neelan, hello, how are you? What else have we got here? We have one victim, so all these numbers are telling us where victims go on the board. Let me put that there so it might be a little easier to see. So we have one here. I'm gonna stand them up just so they fit a little better. Now all the spaces that have this kind of orange outline and the little like wrench symbol are spaces that you can, they're a location where you can search. So this is the garage. So every item in the garage is in this pile. And we can also search in this closet. And that pile is right here. See closet, it's labeled. And then we can search in the attic. And that is that pile there. Okay, so where else are we putting victims? We've got two in the ballroom. We've got one in this washroom. One in whatever random room that is. Oh, our killer starts in the closet. That is creepy. There she is. She's so huge. <laughs> Little girl hiding in the garage. She might be. Yeah, monster closet. I don't like it. Uh, let's see. We have one uh, person, a uh, victim up here in the attic. Uh, coming up to the attic. One next to her in the creepy TV room. And then three in the attic. What are these people doing? Honestly, though, like, what are they doing here? Why are they in this random old house? Why are there just random people in the attic? Like, is there a party? Do they live here? Is it, like, one of those places that, like, someone owns this old house and they rent it out to a bunch of, like, poor college students? I don't know. We don't know why they're there, but they are. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten victims. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Ten victims here, one killer. And now, if we go into a space with one of these victims, two of them at least, uh, more than that won't, but two will follow us. Uh, so they'll come along with us, and if we can get them to one of these green exit spaces, we'll save them, and that's how we get to put them on our uh, final girl, girl card here. So that was our setup. Now we pull an event to start the game. Yeah, reality says, feels like college or high school party in the cool big house no one here, no one is here to look after. That's it. I think that's our story. It's definitely like a college party in this abandoned creepy house.
Cosmic Beep says, I was watching an Into the Void playthrough and the person was like, why are all these people in the bridge? And the card was called Space Rave. I love that. <laughs> Shell Bell, does your character have a phone so they can call the police the moment they step in and see all of the horror? I don't think they do. Oh, I don't. Oh, no. Oh, no. Y'all, this is a really bad event card to pull. For me, specifically. Lights out. Roll one fewer die. Minimum of one when resolving an action card that allows movement. Ignore this effect if you have flashlight or a candle. It's hard enough for me to walk and move in this game. And now I have to roll one less die, one fewer die, just to move around because it's dark in here. I need to find a flashlight stat, and we don't have one shown. We have a trash can lid, a ritual dagger. Oh my gosh, look at this ritual dagger or lucky dice. I might need the lucky dice. This ritual dagger, y'all, says you may discard the ritual dagger to kill a victim in your space. If you do, remove all minor dark power cards from play or deal damage to the killer. That's wild. It's a very hard game, Foglight. It really is. The game is brutal, just so people know. I cannot walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. No. Okay. Well, and that's a persistent event. So that is just, that just exists now. Great. So let's start. <sighs> so we start our first, um, hand of cards is just all of our zero cost cards that are here and then we will have a chance to use a uh, time our little action points that we're tracking here to spend to buy new cards to add into our hand for our next turn so that's kind of how the action economy hand management works in the game uh hey astro boy says oh when did you dye your hair looks great i've actually a couple months ago yeah thank you so Let's see. We have to move into the house. So, and we need to search. Where should we search first? I want to save victims and I want to search because if we, we have to search. If we don't find, if we don't find Carol, we can't win, right? So, we have to do that. So, we could just walk into the foyer foyer if you're fancy uh yeah critter nation says quick delete this video and redraw a favorable card so youtube will never know asher way it looks different in different lighting the hair looks different in different lighting don't worry about that um i say let's i guess let's see if we can get into the garage to one try and save this victim and also search in there Adrian says garage should have a flashlight, right? If only the decks were themed in that way. The flashlight could be anywhere, but in theory, yes. <laughs> so I guess we'll walk. Now, one thing that is nice about the poltergeist is horror starts at three, and that's pretty low. We only need to reduce it down by two to be able to be rolling our maximum number of dice because the number of dice we roll for skill checks is determined by what our horror level is. Um... So actually, I think the first thing we should do is focus. Because if we succeed at this, we can lower the horror and get access to more dice. So let's try and focus. So because we're here on three, I roll two dice. And here's what we're trying to do. Okay, that's one success. And then you have this symbol here. This is not a success, but if you discard two cards, see the two cards on the die? If you discard two cards from your hand, you can turn it into a success. I don't think I need to do that right now, so I'm just going to take the one success because that means I can lower the horror by one, but I spend a time to do it. So the horror comes down to two, and then my time comes down to five. So that's the first thing we do. Should I just do that again and then walk and then call it? I think so. I think I will. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to play my other focus card. We're still rolling two dice, but if we succeed on this, we'll be able to roll three. 
David Phillips. Okay, cool. One, one success again. Okay, not a bad start. So again, the same thing, one success. So we lower the horror by one. We lose another time, but now we can roll three dice for our checks, which is great because actually when I try and walk now, I can only roll two dice because of lights out, which remember says um, roll one fewer die when resolving an action that allows movement because it's dark in here, right? Hey, Draven, I hope you enjoy watching it on YouTube. It's nice to have you here live for a little while. Hey, deadpan. Okay. So we'll roll two dice again and we'll see if we can walk. So if we get one success, we can move just one space. But if we have two successes, we can go up to two spaces. That's not really gonna get us where we wanna be ultimately. Let's see what let's see what we get. Maybe we actually go to the ballroom and try and save some people first. I never if you've watched me play this before, you will know that I have a plan when I start. And then usually about this point in the game, I completely change my plan. Hey, Hot Potato 1992 who asks, how many players is this game? This is a solo only game. There's one player, though you could co-op it, right? If everyone worked together to make decisions, you could play it with everyone, you would just work together. Okay, okay, one success. So I can only, and I can't convert this failure. See how it doesn't have the card symbol on it? So ones and twos, you can't convert. It's a straight up fail. So all I'm going to do is go into the foyer. Okay, I need to know who in chat says foyer and who says foyer. I think foyer is very American, right? But maybe other places too. That's it. That's what I'm doing. So these used cards go over here. Then I have, oh, did that take a time? It did take a time. So I'm actually down on three. So I now have three time left to spend to buy cards from the tableau. Um... I think we should get a sprint. I could have walked again, but I just don't, I think I'm gonna hold on to it. I think we should get a sprint, which is gonna give us more movement and a close call, which will let us um, re-roll dice that fail. And then that'll get us where we wanna be, hopefully next turn, and then we can get a search after that. Thanks, Adriaven. Okay, so people in the live chat are saying foyer, foyer, Coronation says we say foyer here. That makes sense, right? Is that, yeah. Um, reality says foyer, I guess. Foyer with a French accent. Ghost Eye says, I'm not sure I've ever actually used that word. It's also your entryway. Uh, we always said foyer, but I grew up in the South. So. <laughs> Yeah, entranceway, atrium, I, I said. But foyer is the, I, I think is the, I think it's the French way to pr pronounce it, reality, so. Okay. So I'm going to spend two time on a sprint card. One, two, and one on the close call. That takes me down to zero. Those are my cards for next turn. So now I can take these cards and put them back in the market because you can't buy a card that you use this turn, right? Neilan says we said foyer in South Africa. Mm hmm is foyer the same as a mud room, says Daybird. YouTube's gonna love this conversation. Let us know in the comments, YouTube, how do you say it? I don't think foyer is the same as a mud room. A mud room is like, uh, I feel like it's just for the family, right? A foyer or foyer, I feel is like the formal entryway. Like a guest would come in the foyer and to me a mud room is attached to like your garage. You come in and that's where you take off your shoes and all that stuff and put it and then you go into the rest of the house. But you wouldn't have like a guest who's come over for a party or a dinner or something to go through your mud room, right? I don't know, let me know what you think. Asher Boy says foyer. In England? No, you say foyer. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyone. So these are all zero cost cards. So I'm going to put them here. Now we can play the game. Uh, yes, the mudroom is the servant's foyer. Exactly. It's the butler's pantry of foyers. <laughs> That's my turn. The poltergeist is going to go. So the first thing that happens is their killer action. I like to check and make sure I'm doing everything right, even though I play this game all the time. Yes. Oh, I need to reset my time to six. Okay, we resolved the killer action. Now the killer action is up here. So this says the 
poltergeist will target either the final girl or a victim, whoever they're closest to. They will always preference, if there's a tie, they will always preference a victim as opposed to the final girl. Uh, then they will move, and then they will attack. So right now their movement is two, and their attack is one damage. Okay, so their movement is two. I think that means they're either going to go to the window or to the wall because his victims want to crawl and they scream, oh, oh, no, y'all, because the poltergeist is here, here, here. Yeah, the poltergeist is here. I would like to apologize to everyone for that. Why is my camera shaky? Hold on. Yeah, it's not the table. It's the camera. It, like, wobbles. Even though I've got a bunch of things on it. Yeah. It'll settle. Okay. So, it is moving to and attacking. It's definitely going to attack a victim because I'm far away from it. So, it is two spaces away from this victim. And it is three spaces away from this victim. So, it's going to go and get this one. So, it's going to go... Ooh, one, two. How does this look from the side? Does it look cool or confusing? Then this victim, it only takes one damage to kill a victim. So this victim will die because she's doing one damage. So this will go in my dead pool, pool of dead victims. And then because she killed, her bloodlust will go up one. This is bad. Oh, go, oh, Y'all, this, y'all look, you know what happens when her bloodlust goes up one? The horror goes up, all that work we did <laughs> to keep the horror down here is gone now. <laughs> Stupid poltergeist, don't like it. All right, that's what she does and then we draw a tarot card. Something unholy happened in the Roll a die, depending on the result, place the killer in that room. Cool, 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 good. So that's what is here. So we're gonna roll a die. All right, that's a two. So in the attic, something unholy happened in the attic. That's so bad, that's where all of our people are. That's right here. <sighs> Great. Great. So she ends up in the attic with all those people, which isn't good. Okay. Then she's going to target an attack, target move attack. So she's straight up going, in the very first turn, the bloodlust is going to go up three. We're going to reveal her dark power. We're going to, this is so, why is it? So, I think, did AJ design this one? Yes, AJ, what were you thinking? AJ Porfirio, why? Why'd you make this so hard? <sighs> okay. One step at a time. Target, attack. So that is a dead victim. Bloodlust goes up one, which will reveal the dark power. Invisible barrier. Oh my gosh, you may not enter and exit with Carolyn. Oh, her name's Carolyn. I think I was calling her Carol, wasn't I? Unless you have full health. Well, we haven't even had a chance to try and find her yet. Yeah, Clarky says, maybe it wasn't so smart to make the attic our makeout spot. <laughs> Formerly alive, teenager. <sighs> then we do the second bit of this uh, terror card which is target, she's in the room there, move, she doesn't need to, she's in the room, attack. So another victim dies, that is three now. The bloodlust goes up again. So right now her attack is still one and her move is still two, but one more, her attack will be two and horror's gonna go up by two. Nasty. That is not good. Here's the thing though, whatever, kill all the victims. I just need to find Carolyn. Foggy Broom says, I always assume anyone in the attic during setup is a goner. <laughs> it 
<laughs> I get real travesty. Yeah, this might be more of a short film as opposed to a feature. Ooh, now we have the panic phase. So anyone who is in a space where someone died panics, right? So this person is panicking because they just watched this poltergeist come in and kill their two friends, right? So we roll a die. You can see the number here. So a five to six will mean they leave the attic if I roll a five or six. And if not, they will stay there panicked and like hide in there. So let's roll a die and see what happens. <gasps> I just realized something very important that we forgot. A one, they stay in the attic. Y'all, chat, why did no one tell me uh, I didn't have my final health token? That's on, that's on Twitch chat, YouTube, if you're watching this. So Selena has six health, one, two, three, four, five, but you get a final token that when you flip it over after you die, you might have extra health left, right? Just like in a horror movie, you go <gasps> and you wake up, right? So I've set out all the health tokens. I don't know what's on the back side of these. And uh, I'm actually going to make a poll and y'all are, and so Twitch chat is going to decide uh, what they want. Where's the poll? Do, 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 here. Uh, which, what, what, uh, one they want me to put in? Sorry, I should have done this like 10 minutes ago. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Um, which heart token? I don't think I can put them all in. One to two, three to four, five to six, seven to eight, or nine, because there are nine to choose from. You have two minutes to vote. And uh, if it's the one with two, I will choose from that. So if one to two wins, I will choose between these two, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine will be mine. And then that's, that's what my final health token will be. Past Paula messed it up, everyone. That's what happens. So we're gonna let um, that poll run and I might edit this out of the video so YouTube doesn't have to watch it. While that's happening though, it is my turn. So I should plan what to do. And I kind of think, let's just try actually and save these victims before we do anything else. So that means I should sprint. So I'm gonna try and sprint while that poll is happening. So if I get two successes, I can move up to three spaces, which means I can just straight up save these people. Um, Oh, but I can only roll one die because the lights out and the horror went up. Do I have, I don't have any way to make the horror go down now. I can only roll one die, which means I can't. That means there's no way I can get two successes. I don't have a focus. I used them all last time. So I can only roll one die and I need it to be a star. It's not a star, but I can discard two cards to do it. You know what? I'm gonna play my close call to re-roll this die. Be a star. Yeah! Oh, that's right, poltergeist. Okay, so that's one success. And that means I can move up to two spaces and I lose a time. So that's my time, I go up to two spaces. So actually I'm gonna come into this room, to the ballroom, and I say, come with me if you want to live. Again, I'm sorry that the camera is so shaky today. Um, oh, hi, Shepard, when well, my cat is here. And then, th th because two of them are there, they will both come with me. So then I say, come back, come with me, and we come back into the foyer. Five to six, one, okay. So one, two, three are gone. Four is gone. Seven, eight, nine is gone. Thank you everyone who voted in the, uh, in the poll. So I will choose one of these. I'm gonna do this one. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you, chat. Now, I really want to save these people, so I'm going to play my walk now, because if I can get one space, if I can get one success again, I can get them to this exit, and I will save them. Two people in one go, which means I can put two people on my final girl card, which would be really good, actually. It'd be really good. So let's try to walk. One die. Come on. Okay, so that's a total failure. That is a total failure. But look, total failure, I can still move up to one space, but there's a penalty. I take a point of damage and I lose two time. Or I can just lose two time and say, okay, never mind. But no, I'm taking the penalty because I'm serving these people. So I will move up to one space. I will lose a heart. So this heart goes away. I'm going to put it over here. I will lose two time. One, two. So I'm down to three total, which isn't great. And these people and I are going to walk. Yep right there so they're saved so both of these people come out they go on to my final girl card let me put this where you can see it a little better so i can get two time back i can move one space i can take a search action card and i can lower the horror by two so here's what i'm gonna do i'm going to lower the horror by two for sure putting one there so now i'm right there so that's great that's very good and then I'm going to, oh, should I move one space to get back into the house? Or should I take a search action card? I think I should move one space to get back into the house because moving is going to be really hard. <laughs> they stand there looking confused and say, foyer? I'm going to move one space. I think now is the time for that. Shepard, don't jump up here and ruin this game. Would you like to be in my lap? Come over here. Come up here if you want, but just not on the table. Cat. Describe the injury you sustained and how it occurred. Yes, exactly. Gameritis guy says, so I walk, I kick my shit on the coffee table, go, I'm fine, I'm fine, and save two victims, but it is bleeding because I hit it really hard. It was actually one of those glass coffee tables and the edge like cut into my shin. So I am bleeding and leaving a trail of blood behind me uh, everywhere I'm going. So that's what's happening. Um, okay, so we did that. That was good. I think that's going to be my turn. I only have two cards left and only three time to spend. Oh, I'm doing the, the move one. Sorry. So I'm back into the foyer. So now I have three time to spend to get some cards. And I think we are going to... I'm going to get back these zero cost cards. So I have a walk and two focus. So that's good. So this is what I have right now. And I think I should definitely get a search for two this time what's the most I can go if I do really well with the walk I can move two spaces something's beeping in my house so I think I'll take a close call for the other one having only three to spend is rough I wonder if I should have gotten that distraction I don't feel like I have time I need to start searching right Oh, I could discard. Oh my gosh, that's so smart. I could discard weak attack to get a time. Um, and then I can get another card. That's such a good point. I almost never remember that I can discard. Yeah, Neshin says you always forget to discard. I never remember to discard because I usually use those cards to discard to help me convert dice rolls into successes, honestly. How many, I actually don't know, to gain, I get one time. So at any point before the action phase ends, you may discard as many action cards as you wish in exchange for one time each. So I can, instead of the close call, discard the weak attack and take a sprint instead. So I'll have a sprint and a search, and that could help me. I think that's going to be the way to do. Oh, no. Camelisk, who's been playing along, has already been killed. I've been killed by the poltergeist. The house is empty, and a clown doll killed me. That's upsetting. All right, so that's, um, so I'm just looking around. Oh my goodness, y'all, the cat. If I move, can you, you can see him. He's so cute. <laughs> that's my cards. This will reset to six. These go back into their spot. Close call, sprint, walk. And now it is the poltergeist's turn. 
Thanks for being here at 9.35 in the morning, Australia time, Nation. I thought I muted. Thought I muted my sounds, but I guess I didn't. Thank you for subscribing, guest gex. Thank you everyone who has subscribed and followed, who normally I would um, acknowledge more clearly. Here. Y'all didn't hear it? Oh, why did I hear it? I heard the alert. Anyway, okay, fine, cool. You didn't hear them and it's fine. I'm not gonna worry about it. Yep, okay, poltergeist. So here's what they're doing. Targeting, moving, attacking. They don't need to move because they can target this victim right here in the attic. And um, I did let the video of the alerts keep playing and I decided why not, why not? So this victim dies. So bloodlust goes up one, which means the attack is not going to do two damage and the horror goes up by two. Right back to there. We're gonna be like living here, I feel like, right? Okay, so that's just their killer action and now we pull a terror card and see what happens. Oh no, Camelisk manifested this. It's the clown. Did that clown just move? Why? All right, this says a clown doll appears. You may play action cards that inflict damage if you wish. Then, if the clown doll is still alive, and I just got rid of the weak attack, you take damage equal to the killer's attack value, may defend as normal. If you take damage, increase the bloodlust, then the clown doll disappears. No, Nesha, it was a good idea. It was an absolutely good idea. We didn't know this clown was going to come out. <sighs> okay, so what do I have? What do I have in my hand? N literally nothing that can help me right now. So I'm just gonna, the clown pops up, basically Chucky comes alive, stabs me and runs away. <laughs> oh no. So I take damage equal to the killer's attack value, which is now two. So I take two damage. That's not good. I'm down to three health. <laughs> this game is so brutal. And then the bloodlust goes up. So now the movement is three for the poltergeist and then the clown doll disappears. Great. Stupid poltergeist animating these things. <sighs> okay, no one will panic though because no one is in the room with the poltergeist. This mini is so cool, I should paint it. Um, and then it's my turn. We have to we have to start searching. So we're going to the garage and we're gonna try and search. Um, this is one of the alternate minis. Uh, so they have these alternate killer miniatures out now. Um, Guest Gex, who says that Poltergeist mini looks much nicer, better than the official one, very nice. And so it is different. So they have some alternate minis for the killers that are really nice that I got at Gen Con. Um, Van Ryder Games hooked me up with, and I'll show you if you want to see. They have the original one too. So we have this and this. So this is like totally great, but this one is more like you could you can paint that, you know. All right, I'm going to try and sprint to get into the garage. So I'm only gonna, no, you know what? First we're gonna focus to get, try and get the horror down so I can roll an extra die. So I'm gonna roll two dice because this isn't movement. I'm trying to get the focus down. So that's a fail and a turn into a success. And I think I will turn that into a success, but I'm gonna have to discard two cards to do it. It's so brutal. I'm gonna discard my short rest and my focus to do it. My short rest would let me heal, but I'm not gonna do that. And the focus would be great, but I just, I have to, I have to be focused on this immediate goal, I think. So I'm gonna discard those two cards and that will turn this into a success. 
So now that I've done that, I can lower the horror by one and lose one time. So now I can roll two dice for movement because for those of you who are late joining in, normally you'd roll three dice if you're here, but I have an event called lights out. That means when I'm moving, it's in the dark, so I roll one fewer dice. Okay, so now I will try to sprint into the garage. So I roll two dice again. No, 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 no. All right, look, sacrifices have to be made. This is, I'm getting myself into trouble. I'm gonna have an empty hand. I'm discarding my last two cards, including the search I picked up, to turn this into a success so that I can move two spaces. One, two, I am now in the garage. That is all I'm gonna be able to do though because I've now discarded and spent all of my cards. That cost me one time, so I'm down to four time. But here's what I can do. I can now spin four time to get more cards. And now, because I have another search in here, I can spin two of it to get another search for next turn. Then I feel like maybe I should take, are there other things in, in this terror deck that might damage me? I don't know. Thanks for being here, Scarecrow. I have, I have two more to do. Just two more. I'm also going to get a walk in this weak attack into my hand. Maybe I just take two close calls. Yeah, Foggy Broom. I think I'm going to do the two two close calls. All right. That's my that's my hand. Um, so we'll put all the rest of these back where they go. And now we see what the poltergeist does. Okay, so again, she will target a victim or the final girl, but she's closer to all the victims, move and attack. So she now has a movement of three. So I think she's going after the person in the TV room because that's who she's closest to. So she'll go, oops, one, two into this space. She haunts the TV here, which you can't really see from this angle. She haunts the TV and she does two damage. It only takes one to kill them. So they die. Bloodlust goes up again. One more bloodlust and the horror will go up again. And y'all, this is, it's bad. Because when we get up here, we're just going to take damage and it's bad. Okay. Look, it's bad. Now we take a terror card. How much is long rest? Long rest costs five times on Herger. Oh no! <laughs> Why? Ah. <laughs> the ground is shaking. Place the poltergeist in your space. So much for saving this victim, because this victim's about to die. She will target, she will favor the victim over me. Attack. If you take any damage, all of your moves during the next action phase are panicked. I don't have to do that, luckily, but this victim is getting sacrificed for me, basically. So the poltergeist will go move into our space in the garage, uh, target and attack, so that will kill this victim. The bloodlust will go up. The horror, guess what? It goes up again, so we went from here to there. We're never gonna be able to, this lights out. We need to get a flashlight. I hope we can find something good in this garage. Yeah, fine line between final girl and accomplice. Bye Gaspo, thanks for being here. Yeah, Gust Ge Guest Gex, excuse me, uh, says this feature film is brutal. Never managed to beat this, beat it. It's a really hard one. It's a really hard one. Um, yeah, Poltergeist is relentless. <sighs> So I didn't take any damage, so I don't need to be panicked. Um, and no one else will panic. Wow, we only have two victims left on the board. I don't know if we're going to get to our ultimate ability here. Because, yeah. I'm just going to have to run away from her. Search, 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 search. Brutal. So it's, it's my turn.
Yeah, I need to get away from her before the next killer phase. <gasps> oh, boy. This bad is real bad. Okay, so I'm going to search while I'm here. I rolled two dice. I'm going to play this close call to re-roll one of the dice. I want to cheat. I really want to re-roll that. Okay, so that failed. So I now will discard my close call and my weak attack to convert that to a success. This is so bad. This is so bad. <laughs> Bye, Malacha. I hope you, you have a good presentation. Um... So, I only get the top item card in my space. We don't know what else is in there. That is so rough. Oh, I always forget to reset my hourglass as well. Thank you, Foggy Broom. So, I have a trash can lid. At least this will give me... Sorry, let me show you all. I'm bad at switching scenes. So, this is the deck. I get this top one. I get a trash can lid, which will protect me. I can ignore damage. I can use it three times. So I'm going to put that in my hand. Um, but that's not helping me with my search situation. And then I'm going to walk because I'm trying to get out of here. So maybe I can... She's just going to come after me is the thing. Because she's got four movement. So she's going to come after me no matter what. I'm not walking. I'm going to hold on to this card. So that maybe next turn I can go faster. Because she's going to get to me anyway. Um, so. I'm going to hold on to that. These cards go away. I have... Uh, I spent one time with my search. So I have five to spend. So that's actually good. So... I will get back to focus, a walk and a short rest. One, two, three, four, five. You have a hand limit of like 10 cards. Um, so with my five, I'm going to take Improvise. So this improvise says if I succeed, uh, threes and fours will count as successes. Oh my gosh, Foggy Broom, I didn't even see uh, was suggesting to take an improvise. So that's for three. So that gives us two left, and I'm going to take a sprint because I need to look. The places, the other places to search are so far away. That or I just stay here and I search again. Maybe we search one more time because she's coming after me no matter what. So I will actually, you know what, I'll take the search instead. And then and we'll just see, maybe we can find something good here. Okay. Hey, Foster the Meeple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. All right. Because we have to search. Like, that's the only way to win. We have to find Carolyn. So now the poltergeist will go. She will target me because we're in a space together. She doesn't need to move, and she will attack. Oh, no. Oh, but it's also good. Okay, so she's going to do two damage to me. Unless I can prevent it. But here's the thing. I'm going to let her attack me. Because that's going to take away these two health. Because if I'm down to one health, I get an extra die to roll. So I'm going to try and live on one health for as long as possible. So now for every other attack, I'm going to use my trash can lid to try and defend. But I'm going to see if I can... Do a good, do better because I have the extra die. Look, you can't be a final girl if you're not living on the edge. You know what I mean? Foster the Meeple, have you played this scenario, Creature Manor and the Poltergeist? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But now we pull a terror card and who knows what happens. Oh, yeah, I've never beat this one. It's so hard. We're all talking in chat about how hard it is. Oh, 
no, no, no. The problem is I'm playing on stream and I can't cheat. I've literally just pulled another the ground is shaking. I'm gonna have to, oh, hi, Shepard. You wanna sit with me? Um. Okay, so same thing. Uh, the poltergeist is in my space and then they'll take damage. If I take any damage, all of my moves during the next action phase are panicked. So I just need to not take damage. But I actually don't think I can, I don't think, how many is she gonna do two? Can I use my trash can twice in one turn? I feel like I can. Someone on YouTube is gonna tell me that I can't. But I feel like I can't. It has three charges. Can't I block two? I think so. So I'm going to use that to block two damage. Let me get my little markers out. I'll have one left. I love that Shep, my cat, popped up here, looked at it, went, no, not good enough. So I'm going to do two. That will ignore one damage. And then I'm gonna say this will ignore the other damage, like I've blocked two hits, maybe. Someone might say that no, those are for separate attacks and this is damage done in one attack, but this is what we've decided. We get to decide, it's our game, and this is what we're doing. <laughs> you play how you wanna play and I will cheat. <laughs> A final girl makes her own decisions and breaks rules, says Foster the Meeple, and I'm here for it. So I will ignore that damage so that I don't have to have panicked movement next turn. And then that'll, because panicked movement means that I would have to roll, roll the dice and see what, based on the number, where I'm moving. And I can't afford that. All right, so now it's me. Here we go. First, a focus. All right, come on. Two dice. Come on. Jeez. Oh, I should have improvised first. That's okay. I focused. It's bad. It's so bad. I'm going to discard my short rest and my other focus to turn this into a success. So that's one success, which means we lose a time, but the focus does go down. So now we've got, oh, I should, wait, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. I get an extra dice because I'm out of, I only have one health, so hold on. Maybe I'll roll an actual success. Blow on the dice, please, hold on. Blow on these dice. Thank you. <gasps> ah. <laughs> Never mind. Uh yeah, cool. So the yeah, all 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 of the other things. Okay. You did your best, thank you. I don't have a close call, unfortunately. I blame all of you, because you blew all my dice for good luck. I don't have a close call, this is all I have. I spent both close calls the last turn. Oh, I never put these back in the thing. So these actually go here. Okay. Now I will improvise. And I'm gonna roll four dice, because I have three from here, one from here. And if I get two successes until this action phase ends, all threes and fours are successes. So I have not, I have barely succeeded on a single roll this whole stream. Hey, what's up now, baby? Okay, so it doesn't cost me any time. Now for the rest of my turn, threes and fours are successes. Thank you, Improvise. Now I search. 
So four dice. Come on, I need two successes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So I actually have three successes because remember, because of improvised, threes and fours count as, a, count as a success. So that means I can take the top two item cards at my space and choose one. Place the other on top, face down, or underneath. Face up or underneath, face down. Okay. So the top two cards are these. Let's see what we have. <gasps> mm, mm, they're both so good. Oh my gosh, we found Carolyn. I can't believe it. I'm so pumped. Okay. Okay. Everything's coming up. Paula and Carolyn. Paula and Carolyn. I do really want this candle because it'll help me with my movement. Um, but I guess to win, we need Carolyn. So. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, just blame Joe O'Brien for my bad rolls. If only I could Aunt Mayhem. Yeah, I've always had them. Okay, so the candle actually is going to go back on top of the deck face up so that if maybe we can grab it to help us. But all we have to do actually is heal <laughs> because we have the invisible barrier. So we need to heal up to full health before we can get her out of the exit. But now we have this. So this says, but Mr. Floppy said to hide. And I'm like, look, I know that we are in a room with the ghost right now, but you got to come with me. Okay, this is so, look, she takes up a hand slot because you have to hold her hand. When Carolyn joins you, <gasps> remove all minor dark power cards from the game. <gasps> really? Oh no, minor dark powers. We don't have any. Never mind. Sorry, minor dark powers are something you can pull as a terror card that gives them extra power or health. And we don't actually have that. I was thinking this power, but that's not correct. You must escape with Carolyn to win the game. Carolyn cannot be killed or discarded for any reason. You cannot place her in your backpack. So she takes up one hand. She was probably safer when she was hiding, honestly, yes. <laughs> How thematic, she's holding a candle. Oh look, Carolyn's holding a candle. Now we get to use that light, right? Okay, so we now have Carolyn, so I'm gonna take this um, little Carolyn mini and put her in the space with me. Look how cute we all are. We're just one happy family, girl power, me, Carolyn, and Pulte. Um, <laughs> uh, Carolyn is the true final girl. Okay. Is this really all I have left? Have I done this much? Hold on. I focus, yeah, and then I improvise and I searched. Y'all, I think we, we use the cards. Let's, let's, let's try and walk out of here. Let's do our best to get the heck out of here. I think we just do it. So, I'm gonna play a walk, especially because threes and fours are successes right now. I'm gonna roll three dice because it's dark, so one fewer than I would otherwise. So it would normally be four, but three, because of the lights out. Come on. Two successes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Improvise has saved my butt. Okay. So that counts as two successes. So we can move up to two spaces. Come on, Carolyn. One, two, two of the foyer. But I thought it was foyer. Well, it, we're fancy here. Um, and that's cost of time. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna play my last walk to get us to an exit space. And then I'm gonna have to get some healing cards because I cannot leave until I have full health. So three again, let's try and get to an exit space. Don't be like that. That's okay, we only needed one success because one, we move one space, boop. We haven't even jumped out a window or anything. Um, that costs us a time, so we have three left. That's all, literally every card I had in my hand I've played this turn. So now we will spend three time. We will get a weak, a weak attack. I can't long rest because I don't have enough to do it. Wow, really? Where is my, oh, because I discarded a short rest.
There's nothing. I've used all of my cards. Yeah, this turn, so I don't have anything I can discard to get the extra time to get the long rest. So, hmm. I think I have to get the guard in a close call. Right? Yeah, foggy broom to get through the next turn. I think that's what we have to do. So two of that time will go for the guard and one, excuse me, one will go to close call. And that's going to be my hand next turn. So this will reset to six. And I will reset all of my other cards here. That was a big turn. I don't know if we can ultimately survive because of this um, power, uh, this dark power, but that was honestly, that was a really big turn. Okay. So now she goes. So she will target, move, and attack. So she has a movement of four. So she's going to go one, two, three. I can't even believe we've played so few turns actually compared to normal. Like we have so many tarot, so many tarot cards left. Um, okay, then she will attack and that is two damage. So I'm going to play my guard. So these blue cards are defensive cards and you can play them when you are attacked, right? That's when, that's when you play them. So there's guard and there's retaliate. Retaliate is cool because it lets you deal damage back but it costs more than I could afford. So if I can get two successes on guard, I can ignore all the damage. Ooh, if I can just get one success, I can reduce by two. I think I can survive this because even no successes, I will reduce by one and then I can use my last trash can lid for the other one. Um, so I'll survive at least one more round. And yeah, I get to roll four dice because I have the three from the horror level and the one from being not healed. So we'll play out my guard. We'll roll four dice and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Classic Paula. Look at those straight failures. And of course my improvise doesn't apply anymore. So even if those have been threes and fours, it would not be successes. But I got one success. So that means I can reduce the damage by two, which means I don't take any damage because her damage right now is two. <sighs> oh, the horror card. <sighs> okay, honestly, it's actually really helped us that she stopped going after victims and she just ended up in a space with me targeting me, right? Because it means the bloodlust hasn't kept going up. But at any point, something could come out that says she uh, targets a victim over the final girl. Um... Okay. Sorry, I'm just like processing. There's literally like nothing I can do. I think I just have to skip this turn, right? Because, so I haven't just won Nation because we have this invisible barrier. So if you remember, uh, let me put this where it's a little bit easier to see. This says, you may not, wait, enter. <gasps> I can't enter an exit with Carolyn if I'm not at full health. So we're actually one space away. But I would say we need to even move. Technically, we're here then. Sorry. We're in the foyer. Because we shouldn't have even been able to move into that space. Because when you move into that space, you can automatically exit. Um, oh, I didn't draw the terror card from that turn. Oh, you're right. Okay, hold on. I do need to draw the terror card from this turn. It's broken. Place the broken ladder token covering the ladder on the board. That's okay. We weren't using it anyway. The ladder may no longer be used and the space is connected to it or no longer considered adjacent and the horror goes up one. So that's not great. But that actually
actually isn't that bad for us though because we're not taking damage um so then it's my turn and i think i do nothing because i can't there's no point in playing these cards right so i have all of my time i have to heal i have to heal five health so i have six and i think okay here's what i get back i will get back a short rest Two focus, a walk, two walks. Okay. You know what? Actually, before my turn, I'm going to discard this weak attack for another time. So I'll have uh, seven to spend. Um, so I'm going to spend five of that on long rest. Right? Because if I succeed on that, I can get up to full health with the long rest and a short rest. Oh, I wish I could improvise again, but it's too expensive. It's too expensive. So I have two left. I think I have to spend it on the guard. Because otherwise she's going to attack me and kill me again. So I have to, I need to spend it on this other guard card. Yeah, so the last two will go on this guard card. Let me make sure I'm not over my hand limit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, we're good. Okay. I'm stressed out. I don't know that we can heal. And if we can't, I think we lose. If we cannot heal up on our next turn and get out of here, I think we will lose. All right. This goes away. Oh, no, because this guard will come back. So we could have the option to get it back. So now it's killer phase again. So again, we have to use our guard because she's going to attack for two. So this guard we just got will play. We roll three dice now because the horror went up. So it's two from here and one from here. We don't need, mm -hmm. I'm gonna discard a close call and a walk to turn this into a success so that we can reduce the damage by two. We take no damage. Okay, so that goes away. Now we pull a terror card, so scared. Ah, this is psychic confusion. If Carolyn is, it's a minor dark power. So what this would do, we don't have to do, because this is if Carolyn is with you, discard and draw the next tarot card, which is awesome. But roll minus one die when resolving a search card is what this says. So not only would it have been hard for us to move, it would have been hard for us to search. Luckily, we don't have to do that. We'll pull another one. We wait to spend two time to re-roll all the dice. Here's the thing about spending. Okay, so we're talking about this. Um, oops, sorry, it's here. Um, so Zemhurger is asking about the close call. So if I use the close call, you can either play this to re-roll one die or spend two time and re-roll all dice. But we are not doing that. Here's the thing, is re-roll, you might have discarded a card and spent time and re-rolled and still not made it. When you can just discard two cards and guarantee the success. And so I tend to do that because it's just more reliable, especially with my luck. Voices. I hear voices. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. Well, luckily, we still somehow have two. Uh, otherwise, all victims able to move up to the next floor do so. So they can, yep. And they can also, sure. I don't know exactly where they should go. So they would come up these stairs. One, two. And they would go... One, two, they would come up into there. Okay. The horror level goes up one. I don't like it. But that's okay, because we're still rolling two. 
Oh, she's gonna wa she's gonna go away from us now. Now she's going to target victim, move and attack. So she has four movement. So she'll go one. She'll come into this room with this victim and kill it. So that happens there. The bloodlust goes up. When it goes up again, I will take damage and we will discard the next tarot card. So it's definitely like we're ramping up here. That might have given us, that might have, until she kills him again and we take a damage. Yeah, so this, this actually worked out, the timing of this worked out really well for us. Because now... We don't panic because this victim was not in the same room with that one when they died. So now we need we need to long rest and move. So if we can do this this turn, if we can have successful resting and heal up to our full health because of this invisible barrier, then we could win. <laughs> Raven says, until she kills again is kind of a chilling caveat to any situation. You're not wrong. Oh, for those of you wondering, like, what's the deal with this card, right? When does this flip over? That flips over if we ever get to the finale. The finale happens if we get through all the tarot cards. There are only three left. And there's no more at the end of the round. There's no more cards in the tarot deck. You flip over the finale and it gets, it really ushers in the end of the game. It gets brutal. So we'll see what that is at the end. I don't think we're going to get to the finale, but we might. All right. Well, we are going to... Try to long rest. Yeah, that is the question. Could focus ho lower the horror enough for another die? You know what? It, it might be able to. Okay, so we'll play. I'd want, here's the thing though. I want cards to be able to discard for successes. Oh gosh. I don't know what's the right choice. Because I'm going to need both the short rest and the long rest to get five health back. But this is all I have in my hand. So if I use a focus to, to roll more dice, I won't have anything to discard to convert a three or four to a success. I think I should hold on to the cards so that I can convert one. That's what I think. So, okay, I'm gonna play the long rest. I'm going to roll three dice, two for here and one for only being on one health. And if I could get one success, is okay. Two successes would be awesome. Let's watch the dice roll on this side. Ready? <sighs> Why does this game hate me? Do you see what just happened? I'm angry. I'm straight up legitimately angry about this. How dare this game? I can't even do anything about it. Hot Potato says, you have the same look when I roll. Oh, this is awful. Look, no, oh no. No success. I heal two health. The horror goes up. I lose two time and I have to stop all of my actions. I can't take anything else. I'd rather just skip it. All right. The horror goes up one. I lose two time. I heal two hearts. This is terrible. And that's it. That's the end of my turn. Yeah, I lost my extra die now. So this is really bad. It's not great. And that's it. That that's So I do have 4 to spend. Um And I think I'm going to get an improvise for three and a close call for one to try and help things for next time. 
Okay. That was rough. Okay, now all of these cards will go back to the tableau. Oh, uh, actually, I think I get this weak attack back. Okay. Oh, man, my cards are starting to wear out on the edges. You can tell how much I do this. I don't have the desperation die from the box of props. That would have been, that would be cool. I don't think I have that yet. All right. That sounds like my luck, Foggy Broom Hussein. Um, I think you had a 1 in 27 chance of that happening. Sounds about right. Poltergeist goes. So the Poltergeist will target, I believe, this victim. Let's see how far away. Yeah, because they're only two spaces away. One, two. And for me, yeah, they are one, two spaces away, and they will prioritize the victim over the... I should sleeve these cards, honestly. There's not going to be room for them in my box, but I probably should sleeve them. Um, so that she'll come up here. This is our last victim. Kill this victim, which means the blood... Oh, no, oh, this kills me. This kills me. Because look, the bloodlust comes up to the top, does this and comes back down. And this is, I take a damage, discard the next tarot card. Can I use my trash can lid for its last thing to ignore this damage? I don't have my own special item, but I might be getting one. Maybe, I don't know, I do have, I am getting a mini this turn, or this season, for season three, Bloodgrass. Oh yeah, I have three health now. You're right, I have three health now. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to heal up at all. But do here's but here is the question. Do we think I can use my trash can to avoid this damage? Because if so, I think I might just do it. Cause yeah, I'm not on my last health anymore, so it won't straight up kill me. I forgot I did heal. Um, so I think I will use the trash can lid for my one last use to avoid taking that damage. Thank you, trash can lid. You served me well. I don't know thematically how that's happening. Uh, here's what I'm going to say. The poltergeist from where she is in the attic animated some things in the foyer. So the coat rack. She used her poltergeisty powers. The coat rack and slammed into us, but I stopped it with my trash can lid just in time, and that's how I avoided taking this damage. <sighs> now, oh yeah, and we discard the next tarot card. Do we flip the tarot card? We just discard it. actually don't know what do you think I haven't discard so I discard this but then I assume we still flip one right yeah discard is discard and then we f and then we flip this one um because it's to get you to be closer to the finale yeah okay it's coming it's coming so victim Target and then move three. Kill one victim in each space the killer passes through, including its current and final spaces. It will just have it target us and move toward us. No, it'll just get to us. That's all it'll do. It'll be in the space back with us. Because there are no victims on the board, so I think it will target us and it'll go three different moves. That's three boots. So you do its movement value three times. That's 12. So it just gets to us. It can get to us in 12 movement. So there it is. Free Boy says no victims, but I feel like, yeah, rule of grim or rule of like thematic, it's, it knows the house is empty, it would come after me. Um, now chat is saying, I think it just does nothing. That feels too easy, frankly. Because normally it would be like, if there are no victims on the board, discard this card and draw another one. It's targeting the closest victim and there isn't a, a close victim. And it doesn't say to draw another card if there are no victims. So... <sighs> yeah.
Yeah, here's the thing is for the if something arbitrary comes up, you have to choose the rule of infinite evil, the rule of abject realism, or the rule of never ending hilarity. I usually say, what's the thing that is the worst for me? Or what's most thematic is usually what I choose, right? Um, I don't know. You know what? She can get to me anyway. Let I think she's not going to target me. I'm not a victim. That is a symbol for victim. It doesn't say final girl. And I think, yeah, the final girl is not a victim. That says if there's a tie between who is closest, choose the group that has the most victims present, the final girl is not a victim. So they will not, she will not target me. That's what, yes. Okay. She will not target me. She's going to just stay then because there's no one for her to move toward. Okay. 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 It's me. It's me again. Now, can we do this? Can we heal and move? Because I have to be at full health to be able to get through this invisible barrier. And I need to heal back three health. So first, we're going to play improvise. Um, we're going to roll two dice. Uh, and hope for some successes so that threes and fours will become successes. Oh, I didn't even have to do... <gasps> Woo! Everything coming up, Paula. Two successes, baby. Until this action phase ends, all threes and fours are successes. That's right. We're getting out of here. We are holy and we're getting out of here. Okay. So that means all we can do, though, is short rest. So the best we can do is heal two. It won't be enough. I can't roll two dice if I'm moving. So if, if I'm mo doing a move, I still roll one fewer dice. But anything else, um, I can roll the right number of dice. Okay. So this won't win me the game, but it will get me much closer. Huh. All right. So I'm going to roll two dice. I just need no ones or twos. All right then, a close call it is. Now we will spend two time to reroll all this dice. And then there's the balance, exactly. All right, come on, come on. Okay, that's one success with our improvise. So that means we can heal one health and we lose a time. And that's it. That's it. So, okay. <sighs> one more turn, one more round probably, I think. Um, and, and then it'll and then it'll be done. Um I have three to spend. I don't even have enough. Okay. Let's discard some cards. We're gonna discard because if I can get to five, I can get the long rest. So we're gonna discard a weak attack and a focus. Because I need oh I'm gonna get a walk here. I'm going to discard the weak attack and a walk to get two more times so I can have five because all I'm getting is my long rest. And then I get the walk because it's free. And everything else goes back. We've got this. We've got this. We can do this, everyone. We can. We just have to survive a little longer. Okay. Killer. Well, now we'll target me, move four, and attack. So that's... Actually, let's, let's look at it here. So she's here. So she'll go down these stairs. One, two, three, four. And then she'll attack, which is three damage. Oh, no, I didn't take. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to be able to heal myself up. She's going to do three damage and I can't stop it this time because I didn't take anything. 
to help me. I don't have any defense. Question for everyone. I have these two focus still in my hand. Will everyone be mad if I retcon and say that I discarded them to get the two more time to swap out for a guard? Live Twitch chat gets to say. And if you're mad on YouTube, sorry. Because otherwise, I'm seriously, I'm never going to do it. Right? Because I should have thought. I should have realized. that I would have known there were, this was not hidden information. I knew this is what was going to happen, right? And if I had really been properly thinking it through, I would have been like, I need to get a guard so that I don't take damage because I have to keep my health up. Right? So I think it makes sense. If it had been hidden information that we didn't know that we couldn't have conceivably planned for, then no. But I should have planned for that. So that's how I'm justifying it. Focus is coming out. We're going to spin those cards this time to get this guard that I will now play. I still have to roll to get an ex a success, right? So I'm still rolling two dice and hoping to block damage. Okay, so that's one success, which will reduce the damage by two. So she will do one damage. Okay, so I'm down to three health. I need to heal back three, but if my long rest goes well, I can. And then I can walk out of there. Yeah, retcon is how single player games work. Exactly. But also, we don't know what the terror card is. Oh no, we're gonna go into the finale because this is the last terror card. I can't believe it. I always think the game's gonna be over so fast and we always make it to the finale. Oh, the shadows are closing in. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, there are no victims on the board. But we have no more tarot card to draw. <gasps> Y'all, the card we discarded would have been so bad. Look at this. The card we discarded, we would have had to lose Carolyn. It would, I, would, I would have quit, I think. All right, so those are all gone. Now we flip over the finale. It's time for the finale. Place the poltergeist in your space. Done. And now she's, no, no. We do this action, right? I can never remember. I can never remember. Do we do the finale action or do we wait until their next turn? I don't get, I don't actually have to do the finale very often. Yes, we do the action. Well, now it's... Oh, wait. So the... Fin okay, this... This... So this is still the killer action. So we don't do this until her turn. This is what happens when uh, there's initial killer action, finale killer action, mm -hmm. immediate or ongoing effects. So this immediately triggers in the little like paper looking thing. So all zero action cards now cost one or zero cost cards now cost one. Okay, so I think actually this is, that's fine. So this happens in the upkeep. So the move and attack won't happen until next turn. Okay, I got real scared there for a second. I think it's me now. It's hard, there's a lot to keep up with everyone. All right. No, 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 you're... You're all, you're totally fine, freak boy. Um, I think it's my turn now. And I have to heal and get out of here. So, all I can do is play this long rest and hope to get one success. 
All I need is one success. That will heal me three. And then I just need to get a success on walking into the space. I'm so, I feel nauseous. All right, here we go. I need one success. I don't have the cards to discard. So I think, yeah, I think it's going to be over now. So the long rest, here's the thing. Okay, no successes. I heal two, the horror goes up one, I lose two time, so we're on four, and then my turn's over. That could be worse, that could be worse. I still only need to heal one, but she's gonna do damage to me. So we have four to spend, I still have a walk, um, and we're going to get Our short rest back here I'm gonna get the guard and two close calls this is not over um, if we can survive one more turn we, we might be able to do this we just need to not take a bunch of damage okay um, oh those all cost one you're right okay 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 hold on all right well we had the wall uh, okay, so let's put back the close calls. So two on the two on the guard. We had a walk. We will spend one on the short rest, and then one on a close call. Good catch. Thank you, chat, for catching that. Okay, still still doable, right? Still doable. This is all we need. And this is all we need. Okay. Now, this happens. Finale time. The poltergeist is in my space. She targets me. She attacks. She will do three damage. I will play my guard. I will roll two dice. I will not discard anything to convert those because if I can get two successes on my short rest, I can heal two. And if a failure on guard is reduced by one to a minimum of one, oh no, I'll take two. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. All right, I'm gonna pay two time to reroll these dice with my close call. Come on. Take three damage. I think I'm losing this. It's so, I keep being so close and I can't do it. And that's that. And now I will, it's so too little too late, right? Like it just, I can't do enough. I can't stay. This card is really screwing me over. So I will play my short rest. I will spend two dice. I'm gonna roll two dice. And I can't convert that because I only have one card. So I get one health back. And I lose a time. And then, uh, I can't win. I just can't win. 
I'm just like dying a slow death here. I just need one turn to go well. I just need to roll well on one turn. And I could have won just now and I just can't roll and I don't have the cards in my hand to make it happen. So we just can't get out. I'm like pushy, banging up against the door and I can't get out. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep this walk. I'm not gonna get any of these other cards because they cost one and I only have three. Which isn't even good enough because I can't get the long rest and I won't get the short rest back and there's no other healing. I should have searched for some healing. If I had searched more, there's healing stuff in the cards. Take the guard and a close call, I guess, for three. I am sad. I want to win. I just don't want it to go out slowly. Yeah, this is one where everyone dies because of art, exactly. Okay, well, she attacks me again for three on her turn. And I play my guard and I roll two dice. And I reduce by two, so I take one damage. <laughs> and then that goes away. Should I use my, you know what? Actually, I'll play my close call. I can't, this is so. I'll play my close call to re-roll this die, which is still not a success, so that's that. Um, I'm still alive, but I can only walk. I can't do anything. So on this turn, I'm just spending five for a long rest. But I can't, now I can't protect myself. Because I'm on six, that only gives me one left. I need a guard, but I also need to be able to walk out of here. And everything costs money now, and I don't have enough. I just have no card, my, my hand management has gone so poorly. I just don't have anything to use. Yeah, if I hadn't discarded the close call, I'm gonna live on the edge. I'm not gonna take any, I'm gonna hope that there's health in this token, okay? That's what we're doing. We're hoping there's health in this token to get me out of this mess. So I'm not taking anything else. I have one more to spend and I'm gonna take a close call. And we're gonna rely on the chat who picked this health token that I have extra health in there that is going to heal me up enough to be able to get what I need for my long rest and get out of here. All right, all right, that's what we're doing. That's what I've decided. So, she's in my space, she attacks me for three. I take that damage, so here's one. Here's my last one, we flip this over to see if I'm really dead. Let's do this to the PTZ camera, okay? Do I have any health on the back of this or am I dead? Oh no, I'm dead. <laughs> I couldn't make it out. I was hoping, where is it? I was hoping uh, that I would pull, uh, I would reveal this one. Because then if I healed back three, then that would put me right like here with a with a health token and then all I would need to do is still heal back three which would have been doable it was very like yeah it, it was it was a gamble but I felt like I had to do it because we were just stuck in this like slow bleeding out basically so we did much better this time with Creech Manor and the Poltergeist than the last time I played it and that's what matters um but we we couldn't we couldn't quite survive poor Carolyn I'm dead, and she floats away now. I'm 
with her poltergeist back into the ghost closet. The event is, yeah, the lights out made it really hard, and then the fat, honestly, I could have done this if the, um, if this hadn't been the finale, uh, action or effect or whatever, that all action cards, zero cost cards now cost one, I could have done a lot more. I just didn't have what I needed to, like, load my hand up with stuff, right? Um, some of the other ones, let's see what the other ones could have been real quick before we wrap up. Oh yeah, and the invisible barrier. That also, because we were here and ready to go turns and turns and turns ago. So we could have gotten instead, for our final, add three tarot cards to the terror deck. Oh no. Wow. So this is add three tarot cards to the terror deck. Draw a tarot card. If you are unable to do so, you immediately lose the game. So this just gives you three turns left. Thanks for being here, Letterhead Studios. This one is, oh, just two attacks every turn which is horrible and then we could have instead of invisible invisible barrier we could have drawn stiff wind all of your moves of two or more spaces are reduced by one space we could have gotten out with that though and eternal despair whenever you resolve a horror roll lose time for every one showing on a die both of those would have we could have won with both of those yep and then if you draw the epic dark power you have to get the bunny before carolyn will leave with you so yeah, there you go. There you go, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here and watching this upload on YouTube of a live play of Final Girl from Twitch. Thank you so much to Van Ryder Games for sponsoring. I'm going to wrap up here so that I can do the giveaway over on Twitch. If you want to join us live and be a part of things like giveaways or other fun things with chat, tell me live uh, how I'm getting the rules wrong. You can. Twitch.tv slash Paula Deming. Follow there for my schedule. Uh, I play Final Girl on that channel once a month. Thank you so much again for being here, and uh, hopefully next time we'll we'll live. All right, bye everyone.